Perfect. Thank you, Adela. And a big official welcome from my side to all you present at the first of our Teaching the Future online course, STEAM at the Gymnasi Gymnasium International Summer Meetings. I'm Anasta Matescu, and I am part of the Asociația TechSoup team for six years now. And I mostly work with and for amazing, inspiring teachers like you. What we would like to uh, happen in this meeting, a short agenda. I will start by introducing to you a little bit about what we do at Asociația TechSoup, and after, I will quickly give the floor and as much time as I can to our awesome guest teacher, which is a leading Code Week leading teacher for Italy, and not only. And by the end of this session, we hope you will be inspired by her, enjoy our time together, and of course, leave this meeting with at least one idea of an activity to do in the classroom with your students. Asociația TechSoup in a nutshell now. We are a non-profit organization and we work to make technology accessible, understandable and familiar to change makers in our society. Adela, thank you. <laughs> Thus, our work is divided in two main directions, with and for civil society and STEAM education. In our two main research-based educational programs, with and for educator, educators and their students, Predau Vitor and Andreptar Digital, next slide please, we try to equip them with pedagogy, digital skills, and applied computer science competences. We are proud to say that we have reached a community of over 20,000 teachers that use digital tools and skills to build a better educational experience in the classroom. In trying to support as best and diverse as we can this amazing community, we also have built and offer other resources such as teaching materials, a podcast, and regular community meetings. All these programs and resources wouldn't be possible without this small team of seven people, ta -ta -ta, which is the Te Asociația TechSoup family. We are, uh, we are the ones who are building and giving you um, and building this, uh, th these programs. Coming back to why we are here, as I uh, started, this is the first of the fourth meetings we have planned for our summer Teaching the Future online course. This course is possible and I will take a minute to thank to the support of the Romanian American Foundation, Societe Generale Global Social Center, Europe Code Week, Coder Dojo and the Raspberry Pi Foundation for their uh, support. And now, dear Stefania, thank you for opening this session and uh, taking the time to share all your experiences. I will let you introduce yourself. You have the floor now. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Buna sera. <laughs> I share my screen uh, and uh, I am... Okay, please. Tell me if you can see my screen, confirm. Yes, yes, it's perfect. Okay, Thank perfect, you. perfect. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. My name is Stefania Altieri. Uh, I am an Italian teacher. I work in a primary school located in, uh, in the province of Rimini. Uh, I am an EU coding leading, leading teacher, and uh, I am the moderator of an e-twinning feature group called Coding at Schools. And I am also a scientific ambassador. I'm trying to be clear and to speak very slowly so you can understand all my words. <laughs> so uh, you can understand uh, that my focus in teaching are coding and innovative methodologies. I don't know how many of you know coding and robotics and how many of you already use coding with students or integrate coding into the school subjects. What I can tell you for sure from my experience is that it's a very powerful mean to vehicle knowledge. What I mean is that motivation and self-esteem can be improved 
through funny and involving activities. Next October, there will be a very big celebration for EU Code Weeks because it's the 10th birthday. This could be a good occasion to join. The numbers in participation are exponentially growing and it's because lots of students and teachers and schools are taking a chance to be part of a community that want to change the traditional teaching approaches in order to offer a more concrete way of learning to students. Moreover, coding is for everybody, not only for programmers. And this is the leitmotiv of many literacy campaigns that in the recent years have involved many European schools massively. I would like to tell you shortly how coding is taking an important role in education, more and more in all over the world. In Italy, Alessandro Boiolo, a professor of University of Urbino, launched the first video lesson of a MOOC called Coding in Your Classroom Now. MOOC is an acronym and stands for Massive Online Open Course. And it refers to free courses available online, mostly offered by university. And it was 2016 and hundreds of teachers followed him interested in introducing coding and computational thinking in their classrooms. Since then, learning community in Facebook has now um, more or less uh, 38,000 members in the online support group. The main goal is to use intuitive and motivating activities to play with programming, creating new ideas, and finding solutions to everyday problems. It's very inspiring looking at coding projects proposed by innovative teachers and share your experiences with other teachers and students. Two years ago, uh, two years before, in, in, in 2014, Alessandro Boiolo had introduced the Codi Robi in occasion of the European Robotics Week by organizing simple activities based on the unplugged programming method. Codi Robi is a game and also a language used to build other activities or games. It's a very flexible tool for all teachers of various levels and disciplines. Its evolution has been fast from the downloadable kit from internet, we are now to the carpet and giant cards. This has been a way to create unplugged activities, but also online games. We will see something later. The game paradigm of Cody Robby has become an expedient to create a coding treasure hunt led by a bot telegram developed by the University of Urbino. It has been the main activity of Codi Trip, an educational trip to Urbino and visit the UNESCO listed Renaissance city and live an immersive coding experience. During pandemic period, the Codi Trip increased in numbers taking millions of students all around Italy, virtually, because we couldn't uh, travel, visiting cities and sites, monuments, and playing coding all together interactively. As you know, we have experienced a very difficult time recently. Most of European schools were closed because of COVID-19. This meant a needed change for teaching. Teachers tried to reach their students in any possible way to make their lockdown less difficult. They had 
to learn new things. And they tried their best to use technological tools that they didn't know before that. From this experience, from this emergency, the opportunity arose to overturn the traditional setup of classroom lessons and reshape the pedagogical impact. A new kind of teaching method based on cooperation was developed and improved. Distance learning in some cases paradoxically brought teachers closer to their pupils, both from an emotional and a, from an educational point of view. In order to motivate students and encourage, encourage their creativity, we created some coding games to be played online with a computer or a smartphone. These games link the many students during the pandemic period and they are still played all around Europe among the twinning projects or among the school exchanges, for, for example. In fact, it has been proposed in many twinning projects as tasks for European partners. So many pupils could play and enjoy programming. One of these games is escape coding. It follows the escape room trend. In escape coding, a robot called Robbie has lost his way and he is, a he is in a strange place. By giving instruction to the robot, students can move around the maze and solve all the puzzles. Playing is very easy and funny and it's also useful to develop the students' soft skills. This game is based on Google Form and it was created together with the students. Problem solving and critical thinking are needed, but also creativity and fancy are very important. I would like to play with you in order to show you how we can involve students very simply Let's try. You can use the chat box to give your answers. And please, please uh, in meanwhile, you can give me your feedback and tell me your feeling. If you think it's useful and it's an easy tool, and if you think it can be useful to involve pupils, I try now to share my game. Okay, please confirm your seat. Yes, thank you. Maybe a short uh, comment for our uh, participants. If you oh, feel yes, if you uh, feel it's more comfortable, you uh, you can yep. write in Romanian. So put it in Romana commentariile, and we can uh, translate for Stefania or Perfect. directly in English. Thank you. Okay, okay. So we are now in the game. It's called the escape game. Robbie is in trouble. Help him in solving the quizzes and find the way out. And this is Robbie in the middle of the maids, and we can help him. I can just write my name here and I can go ahead. Okay, instruction to Robbie. The instruction, the small instruction set, is just three instructions forward. F, right, that's to say, turn on your right, and left, L. So give the correct instructions to reach the mysterious lady. As you can see, Robbie has got a path to do to reach this lady. And these are the alternatives. So the first option is, forward, forward, left, forward. The second is forward, right, forward. The third is forward, right, forward, forward. And the fourth is forward, forward, right, forward. I am just uh, make it uh, smaller so you can see the instructions and in the meanwhile, you can see the maids. 
Okay, so here you can see the robot and uh, the right solution is, you, you can write in the chat. And uh, if uh, Anna wants to explain and uh, uh, intervene, uh, she can do in, uh, in, in all the moments. So right, um, forward, forward, you turn on your right and you go forward. Let's to say this is the correct one. So if you press forward, you can go ahead. And this is the second question. I can do it bigger so you can see better now. And uh, the mysterious lady says, my father abandoned me when I was just born. He was a poet. My mother was a mathematician and I am known today as the numbers chairman. Guess the name, Emma, Ada or Beth? Of course, she's Ada Lovelace, the first, <laughs> the first software programmer. So doing like that, you can go ahead and you are in the room. Give the instruction to Robbie to enter to the other room. And this is very easy because you have just uh, uh, four options and the right one is just B. So you, you need to be uh, in, uh, um, in the robot's shoes and then his path is just to go one step ahead. So this is the, um, the, the, the correct one. If you are wrong, for example, putting your tick in here, you can just press here, but it doesn't go ahead. So you need to go to the correct one to go to the next step. Okay, software room. The door closes behind him. Ada Lovelace, the first programmer, is the custodian of the software room. In computer science, software is the light part of a computer system. This is, this is, this is, this is a secret exit with some symbols on. Only one will allow him to move forward. So mouse, keyboard, printer, or windows, the only one that is connected to the software is windows because the other ones are softwares. So I put my tick here and I go forward. Okay, instruction to Robbie again, because uh, Robbie has to reach the elegant man. There is another uh, character. So which is the correct uh, instruction? I'll put in here and you can see that you need to turn on um, the robot's right and then go ahead and go ahead, forward, forward. So the correct answer, I don't know if you are answering, is this one, right, forward, forward. And then you can go ahead. Okay, who is it? Who is him? He's Charles Babbage. I am a mathematician, other than I, met in London two centuries ago. I am considered the father of something that I, however, never, see, I have never seen. Charles Babbage had the idea of building what? The gramophone. A pro programmable computer engine or diesel engine. Of course, the correct answer is B. So we can go ahead. And you can see here, Cody uh, has to give instructions to Robbie again and reach the next room. But it's very easy this time because he has just to go ahead twice. So the correct answer, I am going just faster, is this one. And you are here, hardware room. I put. Uh, bigger. 
uh, in computer science, uh, hardware is the physical or material part of a computer. The door closes behind Robbie's shoulders. A colored keyboard appears, but what will be the keyboard to type, to open the door and continue, which is the, the correct one? Cody can see a text hardware, rotation one. Uh, what is the corresponding word? Okay, rotation one means that you need to go ahead of one letter in the alphabet. So after H, there is I, and maybe this is the correct answer. Instructions to Cody again. Give the instructions to Robbie and reach the new mysterious figure. There is another man. And how to reach this man? I put this a little smaller. So it needs to turn on its right and then go ahead twice. So the correct answer, I uh, am confident that you are answering well in the chat is this one. So turn right and go ahead, go ahead, or go forward, for, go forward. And this is the mysterious man, Alan Turing. Very good. You decodes, decoded the um, en, encrypted data. But to continue the journey, you have to understand who am I and what I did. My name is Alan Turing. I invented what? The first program, programmable uh, electronic calculator, a machine to create algorithms, uh, the first robot. Of course, uh, it was considered the uh, algorith algorithm's father. So the correct answer is B. And we can go ahead. Instructions to Robbie. Um, give the instructions to Robbie to get to the algorithm room. So you can see it's very easy because uh, forward, forward is the correct answer. That's to say the B option this one. So we can go ahead and we can see this algorithm room. The algorithm is a procedure that solves a certain problem through a finite number of elementary, clear and unambiguous instructions. So find the correct se sequence. So the sequence are these four. Dirty teeth, brush teeth, paste on brush, clean teeth, or clean teeth, paste on brush, brush teeth, dirty teeth. Dirty teeth, paste on brush, brush teeth, clean teeth. Paste on brush, clean teeth, brush teeth, dirty teeth. You can understand very easily that the correct one is this, where the cat has the dirty teeth and has to clean them. Paste on brush and then brush teeth and then the, the teeth are clean. So this one is the correct answer. And now um, Robbie has to reach this corridor that is called the, the algorithm corridor. Uh, and uh, I will put it smaller. Here it is. So he has to turn on his right and go ahead twice. So the correct answer is this one. I hope you are answering in the chat. I can check right now, but I am sure you are uh, following my, my game. I can uh, share uh, that uh, they are, uh, they're paying attention and they're writing options and they are right. So yes, okay. they are Thank having you very fun. much for your, your feedback. Okay, looking around, uh, it's full of numbers, uh, zero, one, zero, 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 zero and one corridor. Which kind of language is it? Morse code, binary code, fiscal code. Of course, you would say binary code. So let's go ahead and the magical word of 
Cody is inside a complex mechanism of software, hardware, algorithms, binary codes. Where is he? Look at this picture. And answer is in an enchanted castle. I, I don't believe so. In a museum, could be. In a computer, and this is the correct answer. It is in a computer because all these parts, software, hardware, algorithms, and binary codes are uh, the mechanism and the things connected to a computer. So we can go ahead and we need to give the instructions to Cody. Give the instructions to reach the following step. It's very easy because it's just one step uh, forward. So that, that's to say the B option and we can reach the headquarter. Here we are, the solution is near. I am squared. I follow the instructions. I am in the heart of smart objects. What is it? The macroprocessor, the keyboard or the hardware? Of course, this is the macroprocessor and we can go ahead. Macroprocessor room. The macroprocessor is an electronic circuit that performs multiple functions according to the given instructions. The instructions given from Cody to, to the macroprocessor have to be complex and slow, quick and all together, clear and given one by one. Of course, as I am doing with you, they have to be clear and given one by one. And conquest your freedom from our past to our present to code our future. And these are very important words. Over 300, three, three centuries of discoveries in computer science have changed the world from the first mathematical calculators to electronic machines capable of processing information, from the work of programmers with punch the cards to transistors and integrated circuits, from the first bulky computers to macro and personal computers, and then moderns, mouse, optical pens, up to the high level programming languages, artificial intelligence and internet protocols. Who can create the future apps? The programmers, the engineers, who wants to get involved by experimenting coding and programming. Of course, the messages, uh, one of the most important message of this game is this, that we are the ones who wants and that and have to get involved by experimenting coding and programming. So let's go ahead and let's give the last instructions. Uh, give the instructions to, to Robbie to get the key to the future and get out. And so you can give the last instructions so he has to turn on his right and then forward so that's to say this one and we can go uh, the key to success what do you need to plan the future coding and creativity it and engineering only only computers and technology and i would say coding and creativity and instructions to reach the scratch cat. And it's just easy because it's just one step that is uh, forward and coding and programming. Programming means giving instructions to an executor who does not have his own intelligence, but that's not enough. Meow, I am the scratch cat. I can help you to use your creativity. What's coding? It's a way to play with a computer. It is a didactical and playful way to develop computational thinking. It's a serious way to program a household appliance. So of course, 
um, the, the option, uh, the correct option is B, the didactical approach and develop, to develop computational thinking. So we can go ahead and give the final escape. So uh, get out uh, of the maids. So yes, just to turn on his left and go ahead. That's to say the option B. And this is the last one. You did it. We are ready. Go and code your future. And you can just uh, send this module and well done you have uh, done your uh, uh, game. Now I stop my sharing. I just want your um, uh, feedback very quickly, if you can. Uh, I am just checking the, um, the chart and I am looking with my pleasure that you uh, answered all the question uh, with a very enthusiastic uh, mood. And I am very happy about this. Um, if you don't know where to start from on how to go on coding in your classroom, don't panic. Your students will help you. They are smart and intuitive, so they find lots of solution. Um, as you could see, we introduced the, in this game some characters you, uh, that you for sure already know, um, who had a very important role in, uh, in ICT and the, in the ICT history and basing in the basing concepts of coding and programming by playing. This is the best way to learn and actively participate. This game can be played in teams or individually, like a challenge or a competition. Uh, students can also recreate something similar and develop competencies such as creativity and coding skills. This is a very practical resource to be reused and to be easily recreated. Google Form is one of the possible tool. You can also use Google Slides, for example, or Genially, or Image, or any other tool to build crossroads stories, your own adventures. I want to enter the tool and to show how easy it is uh, and with the Google Form that I used. So I share again my screen and uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do. This is uh, my, um, my edit uh, version. So as you can see, you can uh, ch um, choose from these uh, uh, possibilities. So you can add uh, questions, uh, multiple choice or uh, uh, short or long uh, um, uh, answers. You can add uh, import uh, from other uh, Google Forms uh, um, modules, or you can add a text, uh, you can add images, or you can add videos, and you can add sections. As you can see here, you can add your title to each section. And uh, as you can see here, you can uh, link uh, this section to the section two, that is this one, if uh, the um, answer is wrong, and uh, to the section three to go ahead uh, if uh, the answer is right. So it's just very easy to do this. You can link all the answer to the uh, various sections of the, of the game. And at the same time, you just uh, put the title, you can add a description that is not mandatory, of course. You can add uh, a, an, an image, for, it, for example, uh, the lady, and you can make the character talk. And uh, you can add, of course, the question with a multiple choice and always linked to the sections. This is the section three. So this means that Emma and Beth are wrong answers and uh, you can't go ahead if you don't uh, 
um, put your tick on Ada's name because Ada is the right uh, um, answer. And this is for all the sections. You can uh, create a map with the crossroads. And then at the end, you can just have these uh, options uh, for, uh, with the cards of Cody Robbie and create your own story. We have a small question, Stefania, if I can jump in now. Yes, of course. How much time did it take to create such a wonderful game? Um, yeah, it, it depends how many sections you decide to have. This was created in, in two lessons because uh, we divided the class and each class uh, had a team. For example, one, um, some students worked on Ada, some students worked on uh, Charles Babbage and others uh, worked on the algorithms uh, and uh, um, Alan Turing part. Uh, some students uh, uh, dealt with the, uh, the path and instructions to Robbie. So it depends. If you want to do by yourself, you can do it in a couple of hours. But uh, the main topic, uh, in my opinion, is to involve students in doing that. So it, 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 it depends on uh, how complex uh, is the game and uh, how many sections you create. Uh, for uh, just one game. Or if when they become very smart, they can create their own games about several matters, uh, not just for ICT, for coding or other matters. They, they can do this for any, uh, any argument, any topic. So they just need to um, learn how to manage uh, Google Form or any other tool. And uh, at the same time, uh, they have to manipulate uh, the concepts of coding uh, instructions, um, uh, characters, uh, and uh, uh, robots in general. I hope to, to have answered the, um, and uh, uh, it's enough. I, can I go ahead? I think so. <laughs> okay, and um, moreover, in internet, uh, you can find uh, a lot of uh, um, already made lessons and lessons plan. For example, um, there are some resources for free. Uh, you just need to check in the official Code Week website, uh, that is this one, uh, codeweek.eu, uh, or you can just use uh, other tools like code.org that we will see later. And uh, in my presentation that will be shared with you in your course, you will find all the links uh, to download Code Aerobic Kit and also useful websites to use uh, um, already made lessons for free. Uh, this is uh, the... Um, the main, um, the main uh, website, the official website, that he, that, that's um, uh, the um, description of EU Code Week, uh, that is a grassroots uh, initiative which aims to bring coding and digital literacy to everybody in a fun and engaging way. If you go to this uh, section, resources, you can find the coding from home that is a very interesting collection of short videos to do it yourself materials, puzzles, games, uh, coding challenges for everyday use in the family, as well as at school. Uh, you don't need uh, any previous knowledge or electronic devices to, to do the activities. The activities will stimulate co computational thinking and cultivate the skills of pupils, parents, 
and teachers at home or in schools. Uh, EU Code Week's uh, Coding at Home series was uh, uh, built from Alessandro Boiolo, uh, the professor of information processing systems uh, at the University of Urbino, that is the Italian EU Code Week ambassador and also the coordinator of all the ambassadors um, as well as a member of the governing board of the Digital Skills and Jobs Coalition. Um, here, I just enter one of these. Uh, you can see some um, games. You can see the introduction and uh, uh, you, you, you can see all the games uh, from this website. So you can have inspiration. Uh, I just put the... Uh, so you, you can just go uh, in one of these games that are uh, explained uh, and uh, you, you can uh, try them with your students. They are very um, engaging and uh, challenging. So it's a very um, easy and uh, a funny way to um, face with coding. Uh, Cody and Robbie, that is what I, I was uh, talking about uh, before, you can see uh, in this video. Uh, you, you can see many games. Uh, you can have again Nada Lovelas and uh, Charles Babbage and uh, um, it's linked to the ICT uh, tools and uh, ICT characters. Um, at the same time, I want to show you this, uh, that is the, um, the Cody Robbie page, uh, and it uh, explained uh, how to play. So Cody is a, a, a coder and Robbie is a robot. Cody provides instructions to Robbie who ex ex executes uh, them. Uh, make applying coding the perfect uh, um, DI E, uh, gift, no time, no cost, a lot of fun, uh, new skills. Uh, so you can just download these cards. Uh, these are the, the minimal basic uh, instruction set, turn left, uh, move forward and turn right. I didn't explain you anything. It's very intuitive in my game. So they will be, mm, uh, they will be able to, to play with this. Um, and uh, here there is uh, the kit, the board, uh, the PDF with um, A4 paper, uh, printing, single side, uh, all the cards that you need to play with the, with the, with the students. And uh, these are the special cards uh, uh, for other um, specific uh, instructions. And here there are some video tutorials, uh, the preparation, the kit preparation. So you can just see uh, how to cut the cards uh, and uh, to, to play with them uh, and uh, all these things uh, that are very easy. And uh, at the same time, you have uh, some playing, some, some games, uh, for example, the duel that I will show you in a while. And it's very easy because it's just a uh, uh, one minute uh, um, video. So it's very easy and uh, very involving. You can just show your students, they will, uh, they will learn how to do. Two to one, and you, you can just uh, take your cards and uh, you play your cards uh, and, uh, in, and Robbie uh, does what uh, the instructions say. And uh, here, is, uh, here is the Robbie, Cody Robbie duel. That is the description of this game because it's not just one minute and enough, it's not enough, but it's uh, described uh, in, the, um, in the rules, uh, play, play and rules. Uh, so you can just uh, uh, read the, the instructions. Uh, the winner is the team which moves uh, its uh, Robby into a square already occupied by the other team's piece. Uh, there are two exceptions to be regulated, that are these ones, uh, but I can tell you it's very easy to play. And 
um, you can find uh, here also other games, uh, for example, uh, the race, uh, for example, uh, the snake, uh, for example, fulfill. There are a lot of uh, uh, games, but your students can invent, can create new games. So it's very easy to do this. And uh, I want to pass to the online resources. You can find uh, here in uh, code.org many, many resources, uh, uh, of course, for free. And you have some courses uh, divided by age, four to eight years, nine to 18 years, and traditional lessons, or for example, with the um, cartoon characters, so that's to say Minecraft, Frozen, and many others, uh, the dance party, or uh, the um, Hour of Code, um, the, the labs, uh, the artists, the, the many, 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 many tools uh, and uh, uh, already made lessons uh, to, um, to, to use. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, I want just to mention Scratch, that is a software created uh, by MIT of Boston. And you can also remix uh, some already made project. For example, I'll show you this one because it's based on Cody Robbie Duel. Uh, you can see, click on the green triangle to start and playing. Um, click on the deck to take uh, three cards. Uh, select one of the three uh, sprites on the lower part of the screen to apply the moves to the corresponding piece. Click on the cards in the proper order to apply the moves to the selected piece. So you just put your, uh, your uh, uh, mouse uh, on the arrow on the cards and then uh, the, the robot moves, for example, forward, for example, turn on your right, move forward. And then you can change. And uh, uh, this is uh, the pink robot's turn and he moves uh, uh, with the new cards. So for example, uh, forward or turn on your right, move forward and uh, take your cards and so on. This is not a self-consistent game. This is just used uh, as a playground by Alessandro Boiolo to conduct uh, interactive online games uh, with uh, uh, classes uh, for, from all over Italy. Uh, nevertheless, you can try uh, to familiarize with the gameplay in view of the next online edition of EU Cody games uh, and uh, uh, I want to show you um, another game. Another game, just a minute in here. Uh, that is Cody Robbie Snake. This is a game based on the same cards. You have 40 Cody cards to guide Robbie across all the ties of the board without stepping twice into the same one. Every time Robbie moves forward, you earn five points. Press the green arrow to start the game. Three cards are taken from the deck and you have to click on the one that you want to use to move Robbie. Every time you drop a card, a new one is taken from the deck. There are 24 move forward, eight turn left, eight turn right. So to move this uh, robot, you just go here and uh, you can go ahead, uh, go ahead, go ahead, and you are in trouble because you can't go ahead and you need to turn, you turn and uh, it's over because you don't have the possibility to turn on your left. You, you have just to go out of the maze or to go back. So I, I just uh, 
a, 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 a small and a brief demonstration of this uh, just to uh, show you how to, to play with these uh, very, very uh, simple games uh, and uh, uh, very intuitive and your students uh, can uh, remix uh, and replay. Um, if I have some time, Anna, please confirm. <laughs> I just want to show you some application, some, um, can I? Just two minutes? Yes, Stefania, please. Yes. Please. Okay, uh, because I want to show you the um, application of Kodi Robi games uh, in, uh, in a structure, structured project. It was done in uh, some of my classes um, uh, this year, connected to the agenda uh, 2030, uh, and it's linked uh, um, with the robotics as well. So, um, mm, children, pupils, um, play with uh, um, robots and the Kodi Robi cards and uh, understand how to program. So our project starts from building our robot to program. So you can see the robot. We call him Robbie and Cody is his programmer. Of course, uh, it's done in a, a very uh, small class, in, in, a cl in, in a class with um, small, uh, in, in young, with young pupils. But of course, um, I just want to show you how simple it is. That's why I am starting from this. Cody and Robbie are the simplest tool to play with programming at any age, even without a computer. Robbie follows the instructions that Cody gives to him. There are only three instructions to start to, uh, to go forward turn left or turn right. Each instruction draw uh, on the card is given from Robbie to Cody. You can play on a chessboard or on a paper. And uh, this is what we have done with the, uh, the use of a computer or without. The second phase is visual um, and block uh, programming, so online games. The starting point of coding is visual, visual block programming, where the elements of the programming language are graphically uh, depicted as blocks. You just need to move and order the blocks as if they were the piece of a puzzle. So all the younger students can do that. Each brick corresponds to a command and instructions that does not need to be typed, but only wedged on uh, to the previous block. And this is the third part, robotics. Uh, is an educational approach to combine coding and to use the, the robots. Lessons become more in interactive and creative, allow, uh, and creative, allowing students to be protagonists of their own learning. Lots of disciplines are involved. And now we have the agenda. 2030 and its goals. According to the goals number 14 and 15, we need to save oceans and protect the nature. We code with pixel and reflect about the importance of water and habits for all the living beings. And the goals number 12, 11, 12, and 13 are about a sustainable lifestyle to reduce pollution and avoid waste. Uh, the climate change requires urgent actions, and we try to find solutions with coding and robotics. And the last part, dissemination and best practices. The goal number four is about quality education. We are building a school based on cooperation and strong relationships, playing and having fun. All the students are involved and called to act for the good of all. Uh, each of us can do something to save our planet and be part of the change. This project has participated to the uh, STEM discovery campaign this year. And it's just a simple way, a simple example that I could give you uh, to, and to make you understand how easy uh, is to use coding and to link this to the subjects and also to the main aspects of, uh, uh, of life. Thank you. Thank you, Stefania. Um, I think, uh... 
do you want something more to show our participants or can we slowly wrap, wrap up? Oh, yes. Uh, do you mean everything or just the last things? The last things, if you have uh, uh, some more resources just to pinpoint, oh, yeah, yeah, not yeah, to yeah. go in I, depth. If, if I have just two minutes, I, I can uh, also uh, explain more things because uh, the, the most important um, topic for me is uh, to link uh, coding and also robotics to um, other subjects. Oh, and to develop the computational thinking. For example, in Scientics, you can find other resources linked to the computational thinking and digital citizenship, because it's very important to uh, develop critical thinking and soft skills uh, based uh, on the demands of the job market. The the, all the activities are linked uh, to new teaching and learning approaches and uh, uh, methodologies and above all to coding and robotics. And this is another uh, project based uh, on this. Uh, I just... Uh, um, uh, I will. I will just uh, let you let you see this. Just a minute. Uh, here it is. Okay. Um, it's based, as I told you, on seven lessons, and we have reflected on the importance of avatar and safe internet, not to given uh, the private and data um, to internet to other persons. We have uh, uh, used the robots, uh, um, very very simple robots, but uh, also very complex ones. So we have used the technology technology uh, with uh, uh, tests with Kahoot. Uh, we have used a lot of robots like Coco, like uh, Mind, uh, Doc. Uh, um, you can see here some uh, tutorials. We have used the uh, code codes for uh, uh, pixel art uh, linked to some topic, for example, sport. We have used uh, uh, other games like competence coding game linked to the subjects because each of these uh, um, card uh, is um, um, hiding, hiding uh, um, a question about a matter, about a discipline, about a subject. And uh, in this way, we have, uh, um, uh, we have known uh, the, the other robots like Mind. Uh, this is uh, a Cody Color game. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, resources free in internet. Uh, this is Cody Rocky, that is another tool, another robot. And uh, uh, this is uh, a, a tool uh, co called uh, Blockly that you can use. Um, of course, I will give you all these link, links uh, so you can uh, just go and uh, have uh, an, an idea about all the things that you can find uh, in uh, in, in, in the in the network uh, and uh, yes you can just have uh, a lot of creativity to use tools and um, you this is the the, the, the dances uh, with the coding and uh, which uh, which activity you like uh, the most uh, and uh, they answered and uh, this is uh, our video collecting all the most important moments uh, of uh, our lessons and here there is a padlet with all their creations so they are uh, um, the protagonist of their learning. And, this is, and with this message, I want to leave you because coding gives the possibility to be the main protagonist of your uh, and their uh, learning. Uh, and I, I don't know if you agree, but I wanted to show something new. And uh, I, I just want to leave uh, this message uh, to them. I fully trusted you with all the process, so thank you again very much, Stefania, for all that you have showed us. And we saw in the chat that teachers were very excited about all the resources you showed them and were, act were very active in uh, saying the answers to your, to, to your game. 
uh, so thank you again and uh, yes of course we will share your resources the links in uh, the online course so no worries all participants or uh, you teachers will have these resources that Stefania wonderfully presented <laughs> and of course the recording so to wrap up thank you again Stefania um, for I, your time I, and you're doing just... so many amazing can I just thank you, Anna and uh, Adela, to invite me. And uh, I want to thank also the EU Code Week crew for all the opportunities that they always are giving me to tell my experience. And I want also to thank all the people that uh, for, for their attention and active participation of this uh, webinar. I am very happy to be here and uh, to give my message that is very easy and uh, it's funny and your students will be very happy to do these activities. Thank you. Thank you again. And I will leave also Adela to say maybe a few words to our guests and our teachers. Yeah, I was actually very impressed uh, reading all the messages on the on the chat so thank you so much Stefania for all the sharing and I'm looking forward to see all the the amazing things that our teachers will also do and there are also doing thank you thank you thank you and see you tomorrow tomorrow at five o'clock uh, this is a message for all our teachers that are watching see you tomorrow at five o'clock in the next meeting ne vedem mâine la ora 5 pentru următoarea întâlnire din cadrul cursului mulțumim thank you stefania bye thank you bye bye